Energy has served humans for as long as they've been human. When the first humans on the planet moved from living under the sky and into caves and crude shelters, the first thing they needed was heat. Food tastes better when cooked. Caves are cold and nature's cruel. Prometheus gave us an energy boon and fire and nature provided all the fuel we needed at the time for free. It was there on the ground to pick up and throw on the pile. Soon we discovered how to turn stones into axes and cut down plenty of fuel to feed the fires. And eventually, when human mass achieved too large a size to rely on wood alone, we came to myriad other energy sources such as wind, various animal fats, even peat moss, usually collected from nature for free. A human mass still increased on the back of even these limited energy sources, and it wasn't until the Industrial Revolution, when immense amounts of energy and manufacturing power were needed, that we managed to settle on coal and oil as the fuel du jour and doubled down. Since then, the energy picture has evolved an immense amount, but what do the actual numbers look like? First, let me explain what the numbers mean briefly, and then I will show you the energy use picture from the year 1800 until today. This is going to be fast, so pay attention. Watts are a measurement of power, describing the rate at which electricity is being used at a specific moment. Watt hours are a measurement of energy, describing the total amount of electricity used over time. Watt hours are a combination of how fast the electricity is used, watts, and the length of time it is used, hours. Kilowatts and kilowatt hours are useful for measuring amounts of electricity used by large appliances and by households. Kilowatt hours are what show up on your electricity bill, describing how much electricity you've used. One kilowatt equals 1,000 watts, and one kilowatt hour is one hour of using electricity at a rate of 1,000 watts. Megawatts are used to measure the output of a power plant or the amount of electricity required by an entire city. One megawatt equals 1,000 kilowatts. Gigawatts measure the capacity of large power plants or of many plants. One gigawatt equals 1,000 megawatts. Terawatts aren't mentioned very much because it's rare to speak in units that large, but a terawatt is 1,000 gigawatts. You can measure planetary usage of electrical work energy in this unit. This infographic, found at ourworldindata.org, explains how energy demand has increased exponentially while energy sources have begun to diminish and then to diversify to meet this demand. We begin with biomass fuel. Biomass is organic, meaning it is made of material that comes from living organisms such as plants and animals. The most common biomass materials used for energy are plants, wood, and waste. Coal was then used as an easy, cheap replacement for or supplementation of biomass. Then, in the 20th century, we began to use oil, and it swept the market until natural gas entered the picture. Around the 1950s, we begin to see hydropower eking a small margin, and eventually the energy picture became deceptively diversified, sadly still utilizing fossil fuels for the lion's share of the power. This, despite amazing new technologies, leaps and strides in energy science and an exponentially growing demand for energy. Nuclear has been a greatly hoped for bust in comparison to renewables. Nuclear only begins to affect the market in 1966, and if you go study this yourself, you'll find that hydropower has exceeded nuclear power in total market share at every point. In this infographic, it outproduces nuclear by over four terawatt hours now. Now, the lack of growth in solar power is inconceivable when compared to other renewables considering the unfathomable amount of sunlight that falls on Earth every day. It's like someone is deliberately holding it back. Even today, solar only accounts for 1.5% of the total energy market and 12% of the total renewables market despite falling from the sky. Now, in 1950, only 3% of all energy was renewable. By 2000, renewables were only at 8% of the total energy use market. Renewables in 2021 represented 22,270 terawatts of met demand out of 176,431 terawatts of total power consumption. This is only about 13% of the total demand being met by renewable free sources of energy. Now here comes the part that hurts to realize. 28,564 terawatts was peak consumption in 1950, and the total amount of energy production from renewables today is 22,270 terawatts. That's 78% of the total demand in 1950. This means that with current renewable production, we could have almost powered the entire world in 1950 had we only built the machines and worked on improving them. With enough public will, we could have been free of fossil fuel and had 70 years to work on better and more efficient collectors of free energy. Instead, we focused on oil, gas, and coal because it was cheap and the public imagination was limited. Also, very powerful and very well-funded organizations purposefully limited our access to and knowledge of renewable energy they couldn't profit from. How else can you explain this? In the 70 years since 1950, renewables have only managed to gain about 9% more of the total demand for energy, which is beginning to grow asymptotically. What would cause people to ignore free energy falling from the sky in favor of creating intractable radioactive waste and burning gas, oil, and coal? This problem is at a tipping point right now. We have an exponentially growing demand with a linear improvement in productive capacity for the dominant supplier of energy, fossil fuel. This graph proves that we simply will not be able to meet future demand with limited commodity-based sources of energy like fossil fuels. So why do we keep doing so? Well, because it's hard to get someone to give up absolute power over power.